Hi everyone, William Weiser is back, and welcome to part two of my first message video of 2022. In part one, I talked quite a lot about things one through six, and now let's get to things seven through ten. Number seven, our insights for a movie. One example of some insights that we're going to have is that, uh, is that one of Rick's insights uh, is that he's friends with some Blue Clues fans, like, like, uh, like one that I mentioned in one of Rick's streams, Ben LaMancha, uh, who, uh, who has been having a bit of a tough time in this situation. But, uh, uh, but it's not just that, uh, uh, he likes Booba, Blue Clues, Thomas and Friends, and 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 a few movies that uh, that he likes. For me, I'll say that I'm interested in uh, in yeah 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 some children's shows and movies and and game shows like Deal or No Deal and The Price Is Right. I'm gonna mention just those two. By themselves, no more, no less. Um, oh, and we'll also say why we are fans of Booba. Like, like, like the only uh, reason, or the only person I can think of for for me knowing why they are fans of Booba is this guy right here. Because shortly after seeing Willie Blackman and the Boobahs on Deal or No Deal, I was at the library one time and having a yeah, I was having a hard time trying to find something to check out. And then Sammy said, "Think about Willie Blackman," and and so I grabbed a random Boobah VHS and it was Squeaky Socks. I watched that VHS and had fun with it, and that was how my obsession of Boobah came back. I don't know the insights of. Other people that are in this movie, but they all have to be real, not just not just the characters' uh, insights. Like like I know I made the insights I gave for Mitchell Hodak's Mitchell Hodak's character Clayton Grant that yeah, that he's into sports, video games, TV shows, and movies that uh, that he's interested in, but. In terms of video games, he only plays them when when he feels like it's the right time to play them, and and it is the right time. He's the he's the smartest in his class, and he helped his team win a basketball tournament in high school. Um, and aside from that, I can't think of anything else. But but we will come up with plenty of insights for a movie. Number eight. Evan the Cinema Guy and Zek Demac. For those uh, for those of you who have never heard of these two people, uh, they are YouTubers uh, that talked about some of their own childhood fears. I think they only talked about one each. For Evan the Cinema Guy, here's an origin story. I saw a video on Evan the Cinema Guy's channel, and he talked about one of his childhood fears, the Paramount Feature Presentation logo. And seeing that gave me the idea to do my own series called William Weiser's Childhood Fears. Which I did season one on, uh, which I did season one of on my old channel, and and uh, and in seasons two and three, you will see some of those, some of those episodes, except explained better and and basically just re-uploads of that, except different dialogue, and in season four, entirely different. Um, and for Zek Demac, he talked about why the closing for Nick Jr. videos back in the 
2000s, gave little kids nightmares. And he said that it was the see you later outro, or the see you later part that just scared people right there. And according to, according to Zek, this was the only time that a face promo gave him nightmares or scared him. And the rest, he had little to no fears of. And not only that, uh, he also talked about the spine-tiggling music, which I can understand because I've seen plenty of things that have spine-tiggling music, like the Dragon Tales version of the Kellogg's Krispies commercial, while the Teletubbies version is better, and the Little Bear movie teaser trailer, while the Blue Schools version is better. And also the monkeys, the Nick Jr. monkeys at the end, which I don't think is scary at all. And no joke, after I did the See You Later episode, Zek saw the video where I gave him the floor for five minutes of that of that episode talking entirely about why uh, about why that commercial scared him or why that promo scared him and no joke he saw the video commented on the video and subscribed to me thank you Zek he talked about uh, how he thanked me for for having Zek be the guest star for that video and and he was talking about how that promo just just would not leave him alone, and and it comes into him every night that he's sleeping, and it scared the word I can't say because it's in the comment. Uh, Zek, I would like it better if if it was a cleaner word than that. Just saying. Um. But yeah, yeah, it really scared him. But but anyway, Zek, I still thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And I subscribe to your channel as well. So anyway, those are the two guest stars that have appeared on William Weiss's Childhood Fears. And I don't know when I'm going to have another guest star to appear in an episode and have them take the floor before I get to the main course as to why we're here in that episode. Number nine. The Shirt Color Requirements for Thomas & Friends Songs Month Throughout the entirety of February, the Month of Love and Thomas & Friends Songs Month, except for February 4th and the 14th, Valentine's Day, I have to, because I have to wear something red on those days, I have to wear blue, orange, and black shirts. I can't wear a green shirt because of an incident that happened uh, long time ago. Uh, but he also said that if that if I wear like my example, my red Crayola shirt, it has to have something black printed on it, and all of my Crayola shirts do have. Uh, they all have something red. Well, it, well, again, it. One of my shirts is red, but all Crayola crayon shirts I have have black printed in them. And and I also have to wear red on February 4th because this Friday is National Wear Red Day, like I did in February of last year. And that's also the day that How to Rock is celebrating its 10-year anniversary, and I'm going to be dealing with that show one last time, as well as Symphony Miller and Max Schneider one last time, before we move on from that and just focus on Thomas and Friends videos for the rest of the month. Mostly. And the number 10 thing is... Me coming to Rick's house later this year, and shows and movies for watching and doing in Florida. 
this is going to be quite the year for a movie. This year, I'm coming to Rick's house to get to know the Rampazzatis better. And, and when I get there, again, I'm going to be knowing the Rampazzatis better. Not just Rick, also his sister and his parents. But we're going to be watching a lot of shows and movies, but... But uh, it's only it's only the shows that the both of us like or are into. Uh, I kind of said the same thing with the kid friendly version of Paramount's "I Need a Hero," which is one of the opening trailers for upload new booba episodes. Uh, the order for the shows that I put in there that. Uh, are in a random order, and it's gonna be well. Well, the thing I I'm worried about is the time because I want the time on the adult version, which I have in my copy of Face Off on VHS, and the DVD, the kid friendly version on Upload New Mobile Episodes on DVD. I want the time on both parts to be exactly the same, but the shows are random. Uh. It's gonna, and I don't know where to put the one PBS Kids show that I like, but Rick is neutral to. Uh, and and I'm gonna be watching a lot of Blues Clues, Blues Clues, and you, Thomas and Friends, and other things. And eventually, we're gonna make our movie. But before that, I have to celebrate Rick's birthday, his twentieth birthday on May thirty first. He was born on May 31st, 2002. And the the difference between my birth year and Rick's birth year is five and three-fourth years. And, um, and then after we celebrate our birthday, we're going to make our movie because for over three years now, it's been our long-awaited project. And it's it's the it's one of the main things when I visit Rick's house that is on my mind. So thank you very much for watching my first message video of 2022. I hope you had fun watching this. And if you excuse me because I have virtual El Centro tomorrow, I have to go to bed. And when I go to bed, hopefully I will be dreaming that I'm listening to a much better Blue School song like. I can be anything I want to be, and there it is. And a few other good ones from some Steve and Joe episodes. But the Bedtime Business song, nope, you're out. So, thank you very much for watching this, and I'll see you tomorrow when we start Thomas and Friends Songs Month. See you then.